people associate sites of historic tragedies with monuments and memorials to the dead. There's nothing here, nothing to indicate there ever was. But this ground, today Cadman Plaza in Brooklyn, New York, was the site of the deadliest fire in Brooklyn's history. In 1876, more people lost their lives here than in any land disaster in New York City until the World Trade Center attack in 2001. Nearly 300 people died in 45 minutes. 5,000 spectators lined the streets to watch the three-story, 1,600-seat Brooklyn Theater burn to the ground, and 103 victims remain unidentified to this day. It was the third deadliest fire in a building for public assembly in U.S. history. There is a monument to the people who died here, miles away in Greenwood Cemetery, but their story is rarely told. The Brooklyn Theater fire is a tragedy lost to time. Back in 1875, the Brooklyn Theater's production of The Two Orphans was the event of the season, an advertisement in excellence for Brooklyn's theater district, according to reviews. Brooklyn and New York were independent cities competing for talent and audiences. And when an 1876 review described a visibly moved audience at the Brooklyn Theater enjoying a performance of The Two Orphans that made a near approach to the common idea of perfection, Brooklyn's place in the theater scene was solidified. That review was published on the 5th of December, 1876. Hours later, an audience of a thousand gathered for a performance of the two orphans at the Brooklyn Theater, where the doors would open one last time. It was 11 p.m., just before the curtain rose for the final act. The stage manager noticed half a handful of fire on a set piece. He considered getting the hose backstage, but there was scenery in the way. Surely, he thought the carpenters on stage could beat the fire out. But the canvas set was flammable, and the carpenters fanned the flame. The theater kept buckets of water on stage, but on the night of the fire, they were empty. Actors looked up at the fire, spreading towards the roof. The curtain rose anyway. When flaming debris began falling into the house, the audience realized they had to get out quickly. Performers urged the audience to remain seated. The fire, they said, was part of the play. The head usher ordered people who'd rushed to the exits to return to their seats. The evacuation needed to be orderly. He managed to break through the corroded lock on the special side exit, but that sent a rush of air on stage, and the fire intensified. When disaster strikes, when you're forced to make quick decisions, knowing hundreds of lives depend on you, you do what you believe is best, but it doesn't mean you can save everyone. In the first floor auditorium, the audience evacuated within minutes. On stage, actors and stagehands left through utility exits, but on the second and third floors, panic. From the second floor dress circle, people ran down the stairs all at once, jamming doorways, colliding with each other, tripping and falling. The family circle had it worst. 400 people seated on the third level, choking on smoke, disoriented by darkness and closest to the theater's roof now engulfed in flames. Only a single long staircase could take them to street level. The fire spread and spread, making it harder to see and harder to breathe. The staircase wasn't an option. People looked out at the 60-foot drop to the street. That wasn't an option either. Some jumped to the dress circle below and ran to the exit. Some made it out. Most didn't. The next day brought confusion. Morning papers reported no deaths. When inspectors went to the wreckage, no one expected they would find body after body. 100 bodies removed, at least 100 remain. As families searched for loved ones, newspapers published conflicting lists of victims, many impossible to identify. When the city morgue reached capacity, a vacant market became a makeshift morgue. Clearing the site took three days. When all was done, 103 victims remained unidentified and unaccounted for. The Brooklyn Theater fire shook Brooklyn to its core. The city purchased a grave site in Greenwood Cemetery, and on that third day, the unidentified victims received a proper funeral procession and dignified burial. Within a week of the tragedy, the mayor was in talks with Brooklyn's Common Council about building a public monument. The center of the grave site was left intact for its base. Four years later, the city unveiled and dedicated a 30-foot-tall obelisk. The events of the fire inscribed on its four sides to commemorate those buried beneath it and secure the tragedy's place in the city's collective conscience for all time. Today, the Brooklyn Theater fire has faded into history. The obelisk and this empty site are all that remain. Even people I grew up with in Brooklyn never heard of it. Why is complicated and all I could do is speculate. But this isn't entirely unique. September 11th, the tragedy that shaped my life, happened before some of today's adults were born. As I get older, I see it fading, perhaps not from history, but 100 years from now, it will be gone from living memory too. We can't control what makes it into history, but the stories we tell, the things we make, the examples we lead by, determine how the past lives on. Whether it's through common knowledge or one person's living memory doesn't matter. 
So long as there's one person to speak for those we've lost, those we've lost will never be completely lost to time.